Hilchas Shabbos, Perek Shlishi. Laws of Shabbat, Chapter 3. Today, the Ramam finished giving us the core principles of what's considered labor, what's not, and the general idea that Shabbos falls away in the face of saving a life. Now we begin the actual laws related to Shabbos. And the Ramam goes in order of the day. So today is all about Erev Shabbat. Today is all about Friday. And today is Friday. So how do you like that? What could be better than learning about the laws of Friday on Friday? Exactly. For the next couple of chapters, actually, we're going to be talking about all the laws that apply to Erev Shabbat. And today the main subject is starting a melacha, starting a forbidden labor on Friday that's going to continue into Shabbos. It says the Ramam Halacha Aleph, Mutar lahatchil melacha ve'erev Shabbat, afal pishihin igmeret me'ele'a b'Shabbat. It's permitted to begin work on the eve of Shabbos, on Friday, even if it's going to be finished on its own, on Shabbos. Because the only prohibition to do work is in the actual day. But if labor is going to be performed on its own, on Shabbos, because of an act that we began before, we're allowed to enjoy and, have, and benefit from that which is done on Shabbos on its own. Putting laundry, we'll see. There's different limitations on it. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. You know, the whole world is considered to be seven days. The 7,000 years, 6,000 before Mashiach, 1,000 of Mashiach. Every thousand is compared to another day of the week. So we're on Friday right now, after Chatzot, after midday. The Rebbe says this halacha is the message that we should do work now. When Mashiach comes, there's not going to be any challenge. We do the work now. And then we're going to have pleasure from it on Shabbat. Halacha bet, keitzat. What does this mean? Give me some examples of work that I can begin before Shabbos and let it go through Shabbos. Potkin mayim ligina, erev Shabbat im chashecha. You can open water into an irrigation channel right here on the picture. On, on erev Shabbat, right as it's getting dark. Vihimitmalet vahalechet kol hayom kulo. And let it fill up the whole day. On Shabbos, you can't water plants. That's one of the 39 primary labors. On Friday, you can do it. This is a mugmar, you have a little incense, you put it next to towels or clothes, gives them a good smell. And they're going to get spiced up and incensed and good smelling throughout the entire Shabbos. You can put a salve on your eye, you can put a bandage on a wound, and heal, let the, let, let, let the healing effect take place throughout the whole Shabbos. You can also soak ink and herbs as it gets dark. Let them soak the whole Shabbos. Remember this? In the laws of Sefer Torah, we had, oh, remember this? You pour the water into the ink with the, with the right ingredients, the whole thing turns black. But the way, what they used to do is, they used to have these, ink, these, these cups of ink, then you would dry them, they'd become into ink blocks, and you would store them. If you wanted to use them for writing, you had to soak them for a bit so they can achieve, again, some moisture. So you can put it into soak on Erev Shabbos and let it soak the entire Shabbat. You can put wool in a vat, in a big pot, and bundles of flax into the oven. Let them change the entire Shabbos. This is kind of a primitive picture, but you can see what it is. There was something about putting wool in a vat to absorb a dye um, over Shabbos. Now, you can't do this while it's on the fire. You see the arrow there? It's got to be off of the fire. But even when it's off of the fire, it's boiling hot. You can allow it to cook and do its thing over Shabbat. Same thing for bundles of flax. Apparently, as part of the softening process to prepare them for becoming material, you put them in the oven for, for a while, and they would undergo some, uh, some change. So you can start it off before Shabbos and let it go throughout Shabbos. The next thing, You can put out some traps. Here we have some traps, catching animals, catching f birds, catching fish. You can put traps for all the types of animals, birds, or, or fish uh, as it gets dark. And let them get trapped. The entire Shabbos, whatever ends up in your net, is yours. You can also load the beams of an olive press and the round weights of a wine press as it gets dark. And let the water, the liquids drip out the entire Shabbos. Here you see what this process is. Again, a little bit ancient. This is an olive press. And the way it used to work was after you crushed, either it was a second crushing or an initial crushing. Some of the argument in the commentaries. One of the stages of crushing olives was where you had this massive beam 
put its entire weight on the basket of olives, and then slowly but surely the oil would ooze out. That's for a bet habad. For a gat, for a wine press, after they would step on it and you know, do the initial squeezing, then you would have these massive round wheels of weight. You'd load it on, and it would sit there also for a long period of time until extra wine that hadn't come out yet would come out. So this you can load up an area of Shabbat and let it go for the 24 hours of Shabbat. You can light a candle or a bonfire in the evening. And that's also here we go, in a little indoor bonfire, you want to warm up your house, let it go the whole Shabbos. Today, the practical application is the lights. Turn lights on before Shabbos and enjoy the lights the whole Shabbos, no problem. Now, we're going to go into a very practical but complex area of Jewish law, which is leaving pots on an oven and a stove, cooking, going from Erev Shabbat into Shabbat with the Malacha of cooking. It says that Amam Halacha Gimel, Manichin Kdeira Al Gabe Ha'esh. Okay, this is called in Hebrew Shihiyah V'chazara. Shihiyah means leaving something on a stove. Chazara means putting something back onto the stove on Shabbat. We're going to be discussing both of these laws in today's chapter. Halacha Gimel. Manichin Kdeira Al Gabe Ha'esh, O Basar Batanur O Al Gabe Gechalim. You can place a pot over the fire, meat in an oven or on top of coals into a barbecue. You can let them cook throughout Shabbos and you can actually take it off and eat it on Shabbos. However, There are certain elements in this area which are forbidden. All with one decree in mind, we're worried you're going to stoke the fire. You're going to stoke the coals on Shabbos. Or in modern English, you're going to hasten the cooking process by turning up the fire, whatever it is. You're going to do something that's going to be forbidden on Shabbos. So what are the rules for this? Basically, we're going to be discussing three types of implements. One is called the kira. That means a range. There's a fire underneath, and there's an area for at least two or more pots. Once you have two or more pots, there's a lot more air in this oven. It doesn't get as hot. This is the most lenient. Today, our ovens are considered to be a kira. The stovetops are considered to be a kira. Then we have a kupach. Same thing as a kira, just only space for one pot. The moment you stuff that hole with one pot, the air is much more congested and it gets a lot hotter in there. Tanur is the hottest, that's an oven. Wider on the bottom, narrower on the top. All the heat is concentrated in the top, it gets extremely hot. That's the most strict. Okay, so we have kira, kupach, tanur, that's what we're going to be discussing. Yes. No, but ultimately it will cool down. Yeah, yeah. The two, the two is the most lenient. It says the Rambam like this. Keitzat. How does it go? Tavshil shalo bashal kol tzarko, v'chamin shalohu hamu kol tzarkan. If you have a cooked dish that isn't fully cooked, or hot water that aren't fully heated up. O tavshil she bashal kol tzarko, v'chol zman she mitztamek hu yafelo. Or it's a completely cooked dish, but the longer it sits, the better it gets, like a chalant. So those two categories, not fully cooked or fully cooked and getting better, this is where all the laws typically apply. These are dishes that you cannot leave straight on the fire on Shabbos, even if you put it there while it's still day. You're worried you're going to stoke the coals to finish the process of cooking or to make it even better as it sits on the fire. Therefore, in garafa ish, if you were to take out the fire, see the kira had live fire. So if you swept out the fire from the bottom, or you covered the fire with ash, a layer of ash, or some chips from beaten flax, or the coals with um, you know they're very very low. It's as though they're covered in ash. Or the fuel for the fire is very weak. Straw or stubble or uh, animal manure. Where there is no glowing coal. Then you could leave those things on the fire. You've already diverted your mind from this cooked food. And we don't have to worry that you're going to stoke the fire. So again, by default... If it's in the middle of cooking, or it's fully cooked and it's a challenge, it's getting better, by default you cannot put it on the fire, except if you take, take away the fire. Sweep it away or cover it, like what we know today as a blech. You have a stove. You can't just put the pots on the fire. That's mamish cooking. But if you cover the fire, so you tell yourself, you know what, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. I covered the fire, 
the pot's going to sit there, whatever will happen will happen, then you're good. Then you can leave it on the fire. Now, the Ramam didn't mention yet, what happens if you have a totally raw dish? Not even in the middle of the process. Or it's cooked, but it, it will get worse if it stays on the fire. In those two cases, it's actually mutar. You could leave it on the fire, no problem, because if it's totally uncooked, there's not, nothing to, to speed up. It's just in the beginning of the process. And if it's totally cooked and getting worse, you wouldn't want to heat it up more. It's getting worse on the fire. So where all the laws mainly apply is when you have a pot that's in the middle of cooking, which is how most Shabbos houses work. You're cooking on Friday. You don't get a chance to finish everything before Shabbos. And also some things will get better on the fire. Does, Therefore, you have all these laws. How does it apply to how we cook today, which we don't? You know, like, we can't use it for fire. Yeah. Same yeah. thing. You may turn it up or turn it. You, you may adjust the fire. So that, that's why you have to have a blech. Yeah. If you use a hot plate, that's totally yeah, fine. Yeah. If the hot plate has no dial, if it has no dial, no dial. some hot plates have a dial. Yeah. If it has no dial, then that's the best. Because you're just putting it on, it keeps it warm, you don't have to worry about it. Then there's no gzera. The whole gzera is you're stoking the fire or turning it higher and lower. There's, yeah. there's no higher and lower over here. Yeah, but there's no, no, like, in today's, in today's world, there's a blech. You can either put a blech or, or you, 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 you set the dial at one place. Even there, you can't just, you have, the dial has to be covered. The blech has to cover the fire and the dials because that way, that's, the whole problem is the dial. So you have to cover that problem. Yeah, if you accidentally touch it, that's, that's right. That's, that's no good. Right. Same with the chalun pot. You leave it on, you have to cover the dial. If you have a hot plate with a dial, you have to cover the dial. Otherwise, you're going to be worried. Okay. says the Ramam Halachahe, Bamed Varim Amurim, when does this principle apply? Bikira, Shehevla Muat. If it's a kira, a range, that's this one on the, on the side over here, two, the, the, the two pot stove, which has less hot air. Okay, let's look at the chart over here. You can see it over here. The gefet is a typical fuel you use for a fire. That's where you have to cover it in order for it to be permitted. If you didn't cover it, it's forbidden. If you used weak fuel, then it's always permitted because the whole fuel is weak and not going to come to do anything to it. That's the kira. Aval tanur. Now we're going to skip here. The tanur. The oven. You can take away the fire, cover it, no problem. You can use weak fuel. You don't leave inside it, you don't leave on top of it. You don't put next to it even. A hot dish. That wasn't fully cooked or is fully cooked but getting better. Since it's so hot, you never divert your attention. We're always worried. Maybe you're going to stoke this little amount of fire that there is. Even though it's a covered fire or a weak fuel fire, we're always worried. If you have the fire that's out, you took out all the coals. Now, what, now, now, now what's wrong? Why can't you use it, leave a cooked food in the oven? When a person sweeps out the coals, he only gets to sweep out most of the fire, the intensity of the fire. It's impossible to take out everything till not having even one spark left. So therefore, because the hot air is so hot, you may stoke the fire to you know, get going, those little sparks that are left in the oven. Therefore, you see over here, by default, everything is red. No matter what fuel you use, no matter if you covered it or not, it's Asur. The Mishnah Brura, though, says, this is a practical thing today, that if you used weak fuel and you covered it, so you have both things going for you, then it's mutar even in a hot oven. But other poskim don't agree with him. Shachan Aruch. Mishnah Brura says, in this one case, it's permitted. But, but mostly, mostly, the Tanur is much, much stricter. Kira is the most lenient. Tanur is much stricter. What's, uh, what's like a modern equivalent of a Tanur? It's very hard. E even the modern-day poskim say that our ovens, even our ovens, yeah. can't be compared to a Tanur. Because they work differently. The tanur you used to stick things to the to the uh, the walls that it would get super hot, and also you would put stuff directly over the fire. Even in our ovens, the fire is under, so even if it gets hot, it's, it's different. So we, we don't really have an equivalent unless you have an open, literally an open fire where it's very contained the heat. Halachazayin, hakupach. That's the middle one that I showed you before. This one here in the middle. Hevlo rav mehevel hakira umaat mehevel hatanur. It has more heat than a regular range, less heat than an oven. Lefichach, therefore. All that it depends on is which fuel you used. If you use the regular fuel, gefet is like an olive residue. Once you crush the olives and you got all the oil out, whatever is left on the branches and the, and the pieces can be used as fuel. So if you used gefet or eitzim or regular wood, it becomes like an oven. You don't leave in it, on top of it, or next to it. 
a cooked dish, shalom bashal kol tzarko, o mitzanek viafelo, which wasn't fully cooked, or is fully cooked and getting better. Even if you scraped it away or covered the ash. If you use the regular weak fuel, stubble and straw, it becomes like a range, and therefore a machine alav. You could leave stuff on it. To put it next to, you just want to like maintain the heat. You know, you have some challah, you want to keep it a little hot, you don't want to burn it. And you can put it next to a, a range in the evening, even though if it's not, you know, even if there's no blech or no, no covered ash, no covered fire, um, because the outside of a range is much less hot than the inside, so you're not worried about that. The Ezo Hikira, oh, now that I'm finally defines it. The Ezo Hikira, the Ezo Kupach. What's a range? What's a Kupach? Kira, Mekom Shvitat, Shtek Derot. Kira means you have a place for two pots. Kupach, Mekom Shvitat, Kdera Achat. Kupach is a place for only putting one pot. It says that I'm a Malachachet. Till now I've been talking to you about cooked foods that are in the middle of the process or at the end and getting better. Tavshil Chai, Shalom Bashal Klal. A totally raw dish which isn't cooked at all. Osha Bashal Kol Tzarko, Umistamek Veralo. Or it was cooked completely and it's getting worse. This could be left on a fire, on an open fire, whether it's a range, whether it's a kupach, whether it's an oven. You can make a trick. If you have a cooked dish that was in the middle of the process, so it has all these rules, or it's getting better, just before the sun sets, you stick in a piece that's totally raw. The whole thing becomes like totally raw. Now you can leave it on the fire, even if it wasn't scraped away, scraped away or it wasn't covered. Because the key is, through the, the, the raw piece, you've diverted your mind from it. And you're not going to come to scrape away the coals. Okay. It says that I'm a halachatet. Kol tavshil sha'asur lashoto. Any cooked dish which should have been forbidden to leave on the fire. Im avar v'shihahoto. And you left it on the fire, you transgressed. Purposely. If you purposely left it on the fire, asur le'ochlo ad motzei Shabbat, you cannot eat it until the Shabbos goes out. Viyamtin b'chdei sheyeh asu. You have this lot in the Chod Shabbat. You have to wait the time it would take to create it after Shabbat. So it takes 40 minutes to cook on the stove. After Shabbos comes out, you have to wait 40 minutes, then you can eat it. Shulchan Aruch says even other people. Here it says asur le'ochlo, you can't eat it. Even others. Nobody can eat it if you left it on purpose on the fire until after Shabbos. What if you forgot it? You didn't on purpose. You left it. It was slipped your mind. If it was that kind of cooked dish that was in the middle of the cooking process, hadn't fully cooked, asur ad shabbat. It's forbidden until motzei shabbat. The Alter Rebbe says you have to also wait. Time it takes to make it. Why? Because people used to leave it on, on the fire on purpose, and afterwards they would say, "Oh, we forgot," trying to use the trick. So the sages decreed it's all forbidden. But if it's already been cooked fully, it's just getting better on the fire, you forgot it, we're not going to blame you. You can eat it right away on Shabbat, no problem. Now we're moving from Shihiyat to Chazara. That's the laws of leaving food on the fire. If you were allowed to leave it on the fire as Shabbos came in, when you take it off the fire on Shabbat, asur Now you cannot return it. It's not a license that it could be left in the fire and you could put it back as many times as you want. There are, there are many conditions. If you want to put a pot back onto the fire, you have to meet the following conditions. You can only put it back if it's a range which has all the fire scraped out of it or covered. Or it was done, with, it was heated up with weak fuel. You never let go of the pot. You have to be holding it the entire time, and you never put it on the ground. If you put it down on the ground, let's say to serve or whatever, you let go of it, it never goes back on the fire. Even back onto a rage which is covered with a blech, everything, it's a problem, you can't put it back. You can never put a, a pot back on the fire if it's to an oven or that one range stove that was heated with regular fuel, olive residue, or, or wood. Even if you scrape the fire or covered it, because they have extra heat and we stay away from it. If you can't return a pot to a fire, you can't put the pot next to the fire. Today, the halacha commentaries add a couple of more conditions. 
first of all, the food has to be totally cooked. To put back a pot onto the fire when you take it off, that pot has to be fully cooked. Second of all, it has to be the same pot. You can't move your challenge from one pot to another and say, oh, I'm putting the second pot on the fire. It's got to be the same pot. Third of all, it has to still be boiling hot, or at least not fully cooled. Fourth of all, your hands cannot let go of it. However, you could put it on a table or a counter, but you have to always hold on to it. At least one hand has to be touching it. The Can tour says, else hold it? huh? Hand? Yes, as long as a hand never lets go. So you can put your hand on one side, have somebody else you know, grab it, then you, can, then you can let go, but someone's always holding it. And then you can put it back. Some commentaries even say that you should actually lean, you should actually pick it up on a slant. You should never put the pot down fully. Even when you're putting it on a counter, you should kind of have it you know, leaning over. But uh, anyway, that's extra, extra humrat. But, bottom, but th- those four have to be met. Fully cooked, hot, not letting go, staying in the same pot. Huh? Even on the blech. Halacha yud alef. Asur lehachnis magrefalik dera b'shabat v'hi al ha'esh. You cannot put a fork into a pot on Shabbos while it's on the fire lehotzi mimena b'shabat to take out food from it on Shabbos. Because you're stirring v'zem mitzarchei abishulhu. That's considered part of cooking v'nimtzakim mevashel b'shabat. It's as though you're cooking on Shabbos. Okay, here the commentaries argue what happens if it's fully cooked. If it's fully cooked, they say you could take out just to serve. You still can't stir, but you can take out to serve. Okay. You can move from one stove to another stove. You're asking for one fire to another fire. Even from a range which has less heat to a range with more heat. You cannot move it from a stove to being covered in certain material. We'll learn about this tomorrow. Or from covered to a range. There was two ways to keep food hot. Even either over the fire, or you would wrap it with material that would preserve the heat. That's called tmina or hatmana. So you can't move it from situation to situation. But within a stove, you can move it from one part of the stove to the other part of the stove, different fires, etc. You cannot fill up a pot with different types of beans or a barrel of water. And then put them into an oven on the Friday evening and let them go. Because these things, anything like it, even if they're totally raw, they go into the category of a middle cooked dish. Because they don't require lots of cooking. You put hot water up to cook. It cooks very fast. You want to eat it right away. These, these beans, beans also, also they, they're very tough in the beginning, but once you cook them a few preparatory times, the last time it actually makes them fit for eating is very short. Therefore, you cannot leave them on a fire. If you transgressed and you left it there, Asurin, Ad Motzei Shabbat, they're also forbidden. Till Motzei Shabbat, V'yantin Mechdei Sheyasu, you must wait the time it takes to create that type of labor. Halacha Yud Gimel. Tanur Shanatanu Tocho Basar Mi Bo'od Yom V'shiha Oto B'Shabbat. You have an oven, you put meat into it, while it was still, they left it there on Shabbos. This is different than putting pot in a, uh, meat in a pot or putting meat in a pan. This is straight up, that, fa- that Tanur that we saw before, it has a fire there. And you put the meat Inside the oven over the fire. In Besar Gedihu Vechayot Sebo, if it's meat of a goat or something like that, mutar, that's okay. Sheim Yechateba Gechalim, apparently scientifically, if you stoke the coals while goat's meat is cooking, Yitcharecha Basar, the meat will singe. Sheinot Sarich Elacha Mimutar Esh Bilvad, because it only requires the heat of the fire, it doesn't require actual fire, fire will burn it. Vein Besar Ezo Besar Shorhu, but if it's the flesh of a uh, meat of a grown goat or, a, or an ox, Asur, then it's forbidden. You may, in fact, stir the coals to cook it. But if you layered the entrance to the oven with mud, with clay, mutar, then it's permitted because you left it there. You know, you're not going to go back. If you're going to open the oven and stir the coals, air will come in, the meat will toughen, it will get lost. The oven will cool down and the meat will be lost. And you, you don't want to do that. Therefore, if you covered it with clay, you're good. Halacha yudalad. V'chein kol davar sheharuach mafsedet oto. Anything which the air will destroy. En gozrin alav shama yigaleo v'yichate. We don't have a decree you might uncover it and then stir the coals. O mipnei zen. Therefore, notnin unin shal pishtan. Atoch atanur mchashicha. You have the case before that we saw. Putting in bundles of flax to an oven inside, uh, as it gets dark. Sheim gilaho yipazdu. Because those things, if you uncover it, you open the oven, it's going to go to the garbage. Therefore, it's okay. Before, if you're going to put it, it's not going to catch fire and... No, apparently there was like a shelf there, yeah. Huh? Yeah, it wasn't like a, literally on, on the fire, yeah. If you put the, a full goat into an oven, not just meat of a goat, a full kid, 
Hareu kibsar ezo kibsar shor, it becomes like the forbidden meat. The astur lashoto, you can't leave it on the fire. Shama yechateba gechalim, because you might throw the coals. For a full kid, we're not worried it's going to singe. Elaim kein tachatanor, unless you again covered the oven with, uh, with clay. Umutar l'shal shel keves ha-pesach, batanurim chashecha. But the korban pesach, which you used to do that, you would lower the entire uh, sheep into a fire. You can do that on Erev Shabbat. Even if it's not covered in clay. The Korban Pesach was made in a group. And they'll be, they'll be careful. You know, today they have the Karaites who live on Mount Shomron. They do this Korban Pesach every year still. You know that? They just have this massive pit over here with a fire. They take full lambs and they do their own uh, Korban Pesach. Shomronim. Shomronim, yeah. But this is an example of what he's talking about. You have this massive pit in the ground with fire. You would lower the entire keves inside. That's okay, because everybody around will remind you that, uh, that you shouldn't do that. So what, they, they, they lowered it on those, like, poles? Like yeah, like a, like a spit. Like a spit, yeah. And they turn it on, or they just stick it in? I mean, if they burn it to a singe, they singe it completely burnt. Till, yeah, till, I mean, until it's nice and cooked. I guess the outside gets very singed, and the inside gets cooked kishmak. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, exactly, a nice barbecue. Okay. Halachat tetzayin. En solin basaru batzalu al gabeha esh. Now we're talking about putting meat not into an oven. Over a straight up open fire. Over a barbecue. Meat, onions, eggs, over the fire. Ela kedeshi yitzolumi ba'od yom. They have to have enough time to be fully roasted and be ready to eat. V'im nisharu acharken. Ala esh b'shabat. Ad she yitzolu harbeh. Then if you left them on the fire more. Till they became very roasted. Mutar, then it's okay. Because meat over an open fire is like a uh, dish that gets worse as it goes along. If you stir the coals, you're going to singe the meat. Because they're on literally the fire. This is the reason that we saw in the beginning of the chapter, you can put incense under clothes as it gets dark. Because if you're going to move the coals around, the whole thing is going to burn and the clothes will get very smoky. So you don't want that. That's like putting it over an open fire where you can do it as long as it's ready, mostly, while it's still dead. Here you learn. Anything which we're forbidding in this topic is never forbidden because it's being done on Shabbos. It's all a decree when you might stir the coals and when you might not. Therefore, I showed you before, the wool in the pot. It has to be off the fire. Because it might, you might stir the coals. But who, and even there, the mouth of the pot must be covered in clay. Because you might mix it when it gets dark, and that will be forbidden. Otherwise, it's permitted. You cannot put bread into an oven while as it's getting dark, nor a cake or cookie. Onto coals, unless there's time for the bottom crust the part that's stuck to the wall of the oven or the fire, to fully form before Shabbat. And then if you leave it on the fire till the baking is finished, then it's permitted. Because if you're going to stir it, you're going to destroy them. The, the inner crust, not the outer crust. Today, this law doesn't apply because today when we have a you know, convection oven, it goes from all sides. But in those days, the oven used to be, you, st- you actually stuck the, the, the bread to the oven. Huh? They have some places we still do it, right? Yeah. If you put the bread in just before dark, and it gets dark and there isn't enough of a crust to, to allow it to be there, if you did it on purpose, you cannot eat it till Motei Shabbat, you have to wait the time it takes to make the bread. If you did, let there by mistake, you should take out, and you could take out, enough bread to eat the three meals of Shabbat. But when you take it out, don't take it out with this little flat implement. I don't know what it's called in English. Like you do during the week. Loosen it off the walls with a knife. Do what's called a shinui. Do it an abnormal change so that it's not considered literally doing it on Shabbos. Another law that's connected to the idea of stirring coals. You can make a bonfire from anything that you want. Whether it's on the ground or on a torch. Both types of bonfires are both allowed. Light it before Shabbat comes in. And use the light or use the warmth on Shabbos. But most of the fire must catch before dark. Till the fire is going on its own. Doesn't need support before Shabbat. 
But if most of it didn't catch, you cannot enjoy it on Shabbos. Because you might stir it, you might move the, the wood. So the flame should rise. If you lit a single log, same thing. Most of the thickness and most of the circumference must be lit while it's still day. When do we say this? Big Vulin. Anywhere outside the Beit HaMikdash. Mikdash. In the temple, there's one place where they had a bonfire. You know, this is the big, this is the big map. I keep bringing it up. It's a beautiful map of the Beit HaMikdash. There's one area here called the Beit HaMoked. Right there. That, that little house there. It's called the, fi- the, the House of the Fire. Why? Because the Kohanim walked around the whole Mikdash barefoot. It was a very cold stone floor. Only one room they can come to, come to heat, heat themselves up. This is an imagined drawing of the Beit HaMoked. Half of it was holy, half of it was not. So they had a massive fire over here, and Kohanim would come to warm themselves up. This fire, even if it's not mostly caught, Al-Abba Mikdash says, Rambam ta'ur ba'itzim, bimdurat bet im chashecha. You can keep the fire going with new wood into the bonfire of the Bet HaMoked as it gets dark. There's no worry of stirring the coals. Because Kohanim are extra lacquer. You're a Kohanim. Kohanim are extra careful. They don't forget things. They're working in God's holy temple. They're not going to come to, to, uh, to stir the fire. If the bonfire's fuel was very weak, easy to light, reeds or seeds, you don't have to wait for most of it to catch. So long as the fire began before Shabbos, but you can use it all Shabbos. Because fire catches them quickly. No need for stirring. Therefore, if you stuff them together, the reeds, you bound them, or you put the seeds into bags, now they become like pieces of wood. They're like wood, but the whole flame must arise, at least in most of the fire, before Shabbat. If you made a bonfire out of tar or out of sulfur, very, very flammable stuff. Oily substances, wax, or shall kash, or shall gvava, or stubble, or straw. A not sarich la adlik ruba kodam shabbat. Most of it doesn't have to catch before Shabbos. And penesha esh madlekatam bimeira, because again the fire catches very quickly, and that's okay to enjoy on Shabbos.